Church, say amen. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, I thank you so much uh, uh, for those wonderful songs. I'm talking about Brother uh, uh, Tyrone Watkins and also Brother uh, Reginald Hester, who uh, graced their presence with us this morning. And 
uh, assisting us in this uh, worship service and also this praise service this morning. We want to uh, definitely thank them uh, for what they've done this morning. We appreciate them. It, it, it's good to know that you can call on brothers and sisters from anywhere uh, throughout this greater metropolitan area uh, when uh, there is assistance that is needed, and we thank you uh, so much for that. Uh, you know, fellowship just does not start with us just eating and having a good time and going from house to house. Sometimes we can do it from building to building as well. So we want to thank uh, the Antoines here, here also uh, with us and all, and everybody else that's here. Amen, amen. Uh, you know, I met a lady the other day and I was uh, purchasing some batteries and she had on all her chief's gear and uh, she had chief's earrings and necklaces and uh, the whole get up and I was at the battery store uh, getting some rechargeable batteries and she came in and uh, we started talking about the Chiefs and she was excited about uh, Sunday coming and then um, before I knew it, a uh, guy pushed open two doors from the back and said, did I hear anybody say Chiefs? And he had on a Chiefs hat, he had on a Chiefs sweatshirt and Chiefs pants and red this and yellow that and there is so much excitement and she says, I can't wait to Super Sunday. And I said, I can't wait uh, for Super Sunday also. Uh, I got two reasons to be excited about Super right. Sunday. Uh, the first reason is that I told her I'm a gospel preacher. No, I said a gospel preacher. Right. See, some preachers just get up and they just talk. There's a difference between being a gospel preacher and a preacher that just talks because the preacher that preaches the gospel does exactly that. Yeah. Am I right about it, Brother Antoine? He preaches uh, the gospel. So yeah. I, I had a chance to invite her out and hand her cards and tell her where we were at in this city and also the other two uh, gentlemen that were in that in that store. So uh, there ought to be just as much excitement about the Chiefs defeating the 49ers today just as, as us coming in here and raising our hands up. You, you know, I have to say that because there is a 49er fan that's sitting back there in the back. Uh, uh, Sister Gina Burgess, I don't know what she's thinking, y'all. Uh, uh, but, uh, you know, shame on her. Uh, see, we in the kingdom. Uh, yeah, that's right. See, we in the kingdom. Uh, uh, I'm not talking about the Chiefs' kingdom. <laughs> I'm, I'm talking about the kingdom of God. Uh, so the chief's kingdom is secondary, and that's all right. We can be in that secondary kingdom, uh, but the primary kingdom, uh, the one kingdom that matters the most is uh, the kingdom of God. So I'm so glad, I'm so glad that I can tell you today, stand there boldly and crack with me and say that I am in the kingdom of God, the kingdom that matters most out of all of the kingdom, and that includes the kingdom of God. Of the chiefs. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so I won't haste any longer. Let's turn our Bibles to the, the New Testament. Uh, let's turn to Luke, uh, the 27th uh, chapter, verse number 31 and 32. Uh, last, uh, we've been uh, transitioning. We have transitioned from 2019 into 2020. And, and we started off uh, this year uh, with a theme uh, for the month of January, which was new. Uh, in a new year, uh, being new in a new year, and we use uh, uh, the reference scripture of Second uh, Corinthians, the fifth chapter, uh, verse number seventeen, that says, "Therefore, if any any man be in Christ Jesus, he's what? He's a new creature. And what has happened to those other things? Old things have passed away. Uh, you know, Paul had to remind uh, us. Uh, he had to remind of uh, the church. He had to remind uh, the evangelist Timothy. He had to remind uh, Titus. Peter had to remind the church uh, that was scattered abroad. Uh, Sometimes you and I have to be reminded that we are new creatures and all of that old stuff passed away. All of that old stuff has passed away. So you and I need to not just be new in a new year. You and I need not just to be new in a new decade. We need to, we need to remember. We need to be remember Minded that we are new because we are in Christ Jesus. Oh and therefore, because we are new, all that old stuff pass away. Yeah. But we know how it is from time to time that old man is always trailing behind us. Mm -hmm. He's always trying to catch up with us. Yeah. He's right yeah. there on our heels at all times. Yeah. You know what I'm saying, Brother Rockin'? Oh, yeah. The old man is always trying to catch up with the new man and take him over. Yes, uh, so we have to be aware of that. Yeah. So uh, we dealt with sacrifice the first week. We dealt with faith the second week. We dealt with prayer the third week. And this week we're going to deal with Satan. Yeah. Right. Now, yeah. Do you all know that Satan is real? He exists. 
He, he doesn't run around uh, with a red costume on with horns on his head and hooves his feet and with a three-pronged specter uh, poking you to make you do things. You know, the devil made me do it. Uh, see what I'm, that's not the devil. Uh, the devil is you and I. Uh, see, uh, the devil can influence right. us. Yeah. Uh, that's how he gets his work done. It's through all of us. I'm talking about the folks in the church just as well as the folks that are in the world. Look at what Jesus said mm -hmm. in Luke the 22nd chapter, verse number 31 and 32. He said, then the Lord said, Simon, Simon, he says, behold, Satan has desire to have you that he may sift thee as we look at verse number 32 he says but I have prayed for thee that thy faith fail not now watch this church and when you are converted do what? strengthen your brother when you are converted strengthen your brother the tag for this morning's lesson is when Satan, the sifter, knows your name. When Satan, the sifter, knows your name. Church, I want you to understand that in this life, we are going to face some test. In this life, you and I are going to face some adversities. In this life, there are going to be conflict. There is going to be difficult times, Brother Hester, in our lives. In our life, we are going to go through some things uh, that are going to call us, cause us angst. There are some things that are going to happen in this life where we're going to throw up our hands. Uh, but Doctor, I want you to know that I've been through some things in my life where it caused me to fall down on my knees because they were my legs were so weak at the words that I had been spoken to, the things that I had known, the circumstances that I was in, the situations that were thrust upon me. I'm here to tell you that you and I are going to go through tests. Right. There are going to be trials that you and I are going right. to go through. Mm -hmm. Adversities will come. Yes. All right. Listen, the preacher is trying to let us know this morning that in order for us to be refined, uh, we've got to go through, come on, Brother Doctor, the fire. Uh, we are going to go through uh, the fire. Yes, uh, look at our text again. Uh, the Bible says, and the Lord said, Simon, Simon. D did you notice something? He called uh, Peter's name twice. Uh, first of all, he didn't call him by Peter. And we know Peter means uh, the rock. Uh, we know that that means the rock. But he called him Simon. But on top of that, he called his name twice. He said, Simon, Simon. And I want you to know, uh, let me give you an illustration. I know when I was a little boy, uh, my mother used to have to call my name. Uh, but that's it. She would call my name. She'd go, Hanson, and I wouldn't respond. She'd go, Hanson, and I still wouldn't respond. But Antoine, she'd go, Hanson, and finally I would respond. Sometimes it would take three times. Sometimes it would take four times. But the purpose of her calling my name was to try to get my attention. Uh, the next word that you see Jesus use is behold. Uh, this word behold uh, means Look out. It means watch out. Come on. Uh, see, it, it, it me, Tyrone, and Brunel were out. We go, hey, hey, my brother, heads up. Something's headed your way. Jesus is saying, Simon, Simon, look out. Heads up. Behold, something is coming. I am trying to get your attention. Right. Do you understand what I'm saying this morning, church? Yes, Jesus was trying to get. Uh, Peter's attention yeah. to let him know that something was headed in his direction. I want us to know that there are going to be trials in this life. There are going to be tests in this life. We are going to experience adversities in this life. Yes. And they are coming. Yeah. 
They're clean. Uh, it may be good now. Uh, the sun is shining. There's not a cloud in the sky. Uh, the money is good. Uh, the house is secure. Uh, the wife is fine. Uh, the husband is fine. The children are obedient. They're doing everything that they're supposed to do. Uh, the car's running well. Uh, the, the light bill is on. The gas is working because the heat is on. But I'm here to tell you, there are going to be adversities that are going to come in this life. Right. Uh, the wife won't act right. The husband will act right. The kids won't act right. You'll be at the school on Monday, Wednesday, Friday. And because of your children, I want you to know the light bill might get all cut off. The gas might get cut off. I want you to know that there are going to be some adversities in this life. And Jesus told one of his apostles, the apostle Peter, he said, Simon, Simon. Behold, I'm trying to get your attention. I'm trying to get our attention. And the purpose of, of Jesus trying to get Peter's attention is so he will lose. He will lose. He will lose his faith. That's the purpose. Now look again. He said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan had desire to have you. This word desire comes from the Greek word that denotes a demand. He's demanding. He's demanding. He's saying, give them to me. And the purpose of the demand is because of, because of, because of our sin. Do you understand what was going on? If you, if you, if you read of the book of Luke, and you read the 22nd chapter, there are two things that happen that are all significant uh, 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 of value. Number one, a Judith did what? He betrayed Jesus to Christ. Right. Number two, Peter denied him. All right. All right. He denied Jesus. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, I want you to understand when he said, and the Lord said, Simon, Simon, uh, behold, Satan has desire. He is demanding to have you for himself. Now watch this. The, the great thing about this, brother Hester, is, is this demand uh, means that he's asking. Right. What does that mean? Uh, but, 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 but Antoine, he's demanding. In a sense, he's asking. He's begging. Yeah. He's doing this in a forceful, in a, a, in a very urgent manner. Right. I demand, I am designed to have them. What it exposes to us is that Satan's power is what? It's not limitless. Satan does not have all authority. Right. Satan does not have all power. Right. Matter of fact, Satan is like a dog on a leash. He can only go so far. Yeah. Illustration. Yeah. Uh, I remember as a kid, um, a buddy of mine had a dog. And in the neighborhood, uh, if you grew up in a neighborhood, and the dog was named King, he was generally a German shepherd, a very large, and had long canine and bark constantly. Uh, you know how you can tell King had a certain area, area that he roamed because the chain would only allow him to go uh, so far. Uh, well, my buddy decided that he'd bring his, 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 his uh, 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 chain up and he moved it up and I would mess with King from time to time. And I had no idea that King's reign uh, now that used to be 10 feet is now 13 feet. So I ran up to the spot where I knew King couldn't get me and I'm messing with him. And King jumped up and missed my face by inches. But Antoine, I'm talking about inches. I, I did not know. I fell back on the ground and he, all he could do was laugh. I, I'm telling you, Satan is on a chain and he can only go so far. Yeah, so his yeah. power is limited. Now, I'm talking about this morning when Satan, the sifter, knows your name. Simon, Simon. Yeah. Yeah. Satan desires or demands to have you. Yeah. He knew his name. Uh, what does that mean? 
If Satan doesn't know your name, could it be because there is no potential for greatness behind your name? What am I saying this morning? Satan doesn't know your name because you're not a threat to him or his kingdom. Uh huh. You're not a threat to him or his kingdom. You don't do anything any different than what you would normally do? You don't sacrifice anything. I didn't say contribution. I said you don't sacrifice anything. I'm telling you to give a contribution is easy, but the sacrifice requires some inner strength within you to do something different, to do something that is out of the norm. That you don't have faith. Uh, you trust in man. You trust in yourself. You trust in a folks that don't have a, your best interest. Uh, me and Brother Hoover had a conversation this morning about everything that went on over the past few weeks, in the past few months with our, our president, uh, uh, the United States of America. What a waste of time. What a waste of taxpayers' money. What, a, it, 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 uh, what an incredible waste of time and effort. It, it has nothing to do with me because I don't put my faith nor do I put my trust in the Senate or Congress, nor do I put my trust in the President of the United States of America. I put my trust, I put my hope, I put my faith in the Almighty God who rules the kingdom of heaven just as he rules this kingdom here. If Satan the sifter knows your name, it's because you are in a potential threat to him and his kingdom. If you don't, if he doesn't, yeah. you don't pray. Yeah, yeah you don't pray. Uh, see, you don't go to God first in prayer. Mm -hmm. uh, you don't get on your knees throughout the course of the day and petition to the Almighty God when help is needed. You don't even thank him in the morning when your eyes woke up. I'm here to tell you that the reason why your eyes woke up this morning is not because of you, but it's because of the Almighty God. That's the reason why we're here today. That's the reason why we can raise up our hands and say hallelujah, praise the name to the most merciful God, the most forgiving God, the most uh, 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 faithful God. That's the reason why we can do that. Yes, sir. If Satan knows your name, you better believe you're going to be tested. Right. You're going to be sifted yeah. like wheat. Yeah. Now, this word sift is an agricultural word, and, and, and it's taking the process of taking wheat, and it really is just a strainer. Uh, you, you've seen some of the metal strainers when you were kids, and the, the, the strainer round, strainer, very, very small hole, and you would pour stuff in it, you shake it up, and you shake it up, and the purpose of that was to agitate uh, what was going on with the wheat. The purpose was to separate the chaff uh, from the grain, and then the grain can be used to make flour, and then flour could be eaten to, to make bread to be eaten. So the purpose of it was shaking it up. It was agitated. I'm here to tell you that if there's not some shakeups happening in your life, I'm here to tell you if Satan's not agitating your life, then he does not know your name. What, look, I'm trying to say, I'm trying to say something here this morning that uh, most people will say, I would want Satan to know my name. Because they don't want that agitation, Brother Parker. They don't want to be shaken up. They want everything to be calm. They want everything to be peaceful. But you will not grow. Come on. Right. Come on. Come on. Your faith will not get stronger. Yes. 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 Amen. Yeah. So the sifter does not know your name. Right. Yeah. Did you see that? Look at it again. Luke 22 and 31. He said, then the Lord said, Simon, Simon, mm -hmm. Satan desires to have you that he may sift the oh. Oh. Oh, my That was a sneeze. <laughs> Woo. Thank you very much. <laughs> Uh, let me get back in character now. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, and the Lord said, uh, uh, Simon, Simon, uh, behold, Satan desires to have you that he may set you as weak. Listen, this is not, this is personal. 
Uh, when Satan knows your name, it's personal. You better believe it's personal. Uh, it's not about the trouble or the problems that you are having. Uh, it's not about your relationship uh, with your wife or your husband in your marriage because it's not going good. Uh, it's not about the struggles that you're having on your job. Uh, it's not about uh, the struggles or, or, or the disagreement that's going on in the church. Uh, this is personal. This is an attack on you personally. He knows your name. What's the preacher saying this morning? Y'all remember Job? You, you remember Job? Uh, uh, Job was a, a good man. Uh, you remember Job prayed daily. Uh, he prayed for his children if they had cursed God. Uh, Job was a blessed man. He was a very rich man. Did you hear what I said? Uh, Brother Hester, he was a rich man. He was a very rich man. And there's nothing wrong with folks being in the church that were rich. There's nothing wrong with folks who have a great relationship with God being rich. I'm here to tell you that a part of that is because of their relationship with God. Uh, many of our men in the Old Testament, do you know Abraham was rich? Uh-huh. You remember Solomon, right? Uh, a very rich man. Uh, they, 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 but all of them had something that you and I have. They all had sin. All right now. That's why Satan demands that we be turned over to him because of our sin. See, Satan knows scripture just as good as some of us. Matter of fact, he knows scripture better than us. So we understand when he reads Romans, the sixth chapter, verse number 23, when he says the wages of sin is what? Death. Death. I'm demanding that you give them to me. Why? Because they sin. And the wages of sin is death. So Satan goes before God and says, I gotta have him. I need that brother Wallace. He preaches your gospel. He studies your word. He prays constantly, but he sinned, and because of his sin, I'm demanding you to have him. Come on. I want him. That sister comes to church all of the time. She blesses everybody. She writes cards to say how wonderful uh, they are. She's pleasing to everybody. She's always smiling. She's always helping. But I need her because she sinned. And I'm demanding that you turn her over to me. That's what Satan has done. That's what he did with Job. I'm here to tell you this morning, when Satan the sifter knows your name, you better get ready to be tested. Did you hear what I said? Yes, you better be ready. Get ready to be tested if you're not ready. Uh, look at look at Job, the first chapter. Uh, you don't believe me. Somebody don't believe me, brother. That's right. Look at Job, the first chapter, uh, verse number seven. Look at what it said. It said, and, and, and the Lord said unto Satan, What cometh thou? And Satan answered and said, Lord, for I'm going to and fro in the earth and walking up and down in it. Well, what's the purpose of doing that, Satan? You remember what Peter said in First Peter, the fifth chapter, verse number, verse number eight, uh, when he said uh, that we and I are to be a sober. Is that right? Right. Five and eight. First Peter five and eight. Well, really, to me, brother Antoine. Be a sober spirit. He said, be a sober spirit. Be on the alert. Be alert. Your adversary. Your adversary the here. Devil. The devil. Bows around like a roaring lion. Like a roaring lion. To seeking devil. someone to devour. Seeking someone to devour. Yes, if he knows your name, yeah. he's looking for you. Yes, right. yes, he's looking yes, for you. Yes, and the purpose is to ship you as we. Yes. He wants to separate yes. us from God. Yeah. Judas failed. Yeah. Peter failed. But Judas failed but didn't get up. All right. Peter failed but he got up. Yes, yes, I'm telling us, we gotta stay strong because when he knows your name, yes. when Satan knows your name, the sifter, he's coming after 
you. And it is personal. He's here to attack your ministry. He's here to attack your faith. He's here to attack your testimony. He's here to attack the God that you serve. He's here to take your focus off God any way that he can. Did you hear what I said? I said any way that he can. That's where we got to remember what Jesus said in Matthew the 6th chapter verse number 33 when he says seek ye what? First the kingdom of God and be what? Righteous and everything else is going to be added unto us. That's why we hold on to his unchanging hand. That's why we do what we do. See, behold, Satan desires, he demands to sift you as weak. He wants to have us. He wants us. See, see look, look, look. When we have something, it's of our possession. It belongs to us. Satan is demanding what he feels is rightfully his, yeah. which yeah. is our souls. Wow. And he wants to have it for his purpose. See, let me tell you something. Do you know the first folks in the world belong to Satan? Yeah. Satan has them. Yeah. And, and, and the funny thing about it is he don't even know their names because they're no threat to his kingdom. But he's designed and demanding for us to be his so you and I can do his work. We're no longer in the kingdom of God, but we are in the kingdom of Satan. He said, Lord, uh, Peter, uh, Jesus said, Lord, uh, uh, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan desires to have you. That he may sift you yes. as wheat. That's what it is, church. If he knows your name, get ready. If he doesn't know your name, he ought to. And if he doesn't know your name, if he doesn't know your name, that says something about some tests. That says something about adversity. Job had everything going on. Job had all kind of money. He was known to be the greatest in the East. He had more camels than everybody else. He had more meat, more sheep, more dogs. He had more money than any and everybody in the East and was well known. But it was personal. Satan said, take that fence from around him and let me have him. And God said, you go ahead. But then he pulled the chain back. He let us know that Satan does not have all authority when he said, don't you dare kill my servant. He said, don't you kill my servant. So that in itself ought to wake us up and make us shout hallelujah, praise the Lord, that he is a limited being. Do you realize there are things that are going on right now and have gone on? In the spiritual world, one that you and I have no idea what has happened. That's right. That's right. That's right. It's already happened. And you and I do not know it. That's why I keep saying you cannot fight a physical battle in a physical nature. You have to fight a spiritual battle in the spiritual realm by getting on your knees. That's how you fight it. Look at verse number 32. Verse number 32, he said, but I, Jesus said, but I, but I, Jesus is saying, but I have prayed yes, for you. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Brother Hester. Yes, sir. Brother Hester, we talked last week about prayer. We talked about uh, James, the fifth chapter, verse number 13 through 18. You know, we talk about the righteous of the We talk about those who uh, 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 are sick to call on the elders. Uh, if you sin in your life, you, you pray, and the righteous of the much. We talk about all of that good stuff about prayer and how essential and important prayer is. But I want you to know, Jesus said to Peter, yeah. I have prayed for you. Now, let me tell you what he didn't say. 
He didn't say, well, Peter, Satan desires to have you. That he may sift you like me. So here's what I did. I got millions of angels that I'm seeing to protect you. I got millions of angels to stop that from happening. I got centurion of angels to stop that from happening. Matter of fact, I'm sending Gabriel. Oh, I'm sending down Michael because Gabriel was busy. Oh, when Gabriel was busy, Michael was busy. I'm sending Sinclair down. I'm sending Clint there down to stop Satan from doing what he's doing. He didn't say that. See, I'm talking about refinement here. I'm talking about when Satan, the sifter, knows your name. And when he does, Jesus is praying for us. That's why it's so important that we do what? One to another? Pray! Yes, sir. We're in the same boat together, are we not? All right. uh, we should all be rowing in the same direction. We should all be headed in the same direction. If somebody's not headed in the same direction, uh, maybe they need to be thrown out of, uh, anyway, that's not our job. Uh, see, they talk about the wheat and the tear, and that's not our job in Antoine. In Matthew 13 chapter, uh, the wheat and the tear, we, we yeah. still leave them alone, yeah. and when the angels come, they'll sever the wicked yes, from the righteous. Right. So y'all quit that. <laughs> Trying to do, do the angels' job, quit that. Uh, but that's what he did, he didn't say that. But yeah. he said, I pray for you. And I'm here to tell you on this Sunday morning standing here, if I got Jesus praying for me and I'm the Apostle Paul, yes, yes. oh my goodness. I mean, and, and, and listen, it, 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 let, me, let me step back to verse number 31 again. Uh, see, when he said, uh, uh, si when he said uh, Simon, Simon, uh, Satan desired to have you, that he may sift you, you, as we. That you is in the plurality, not in the single. That you is in the plurality. And what he was saying is, not only do I want you, Peter, but I want all of the apostles. And matter of fact, I want all of you all. He wants every last one of us, Brother Proctor, so he can sift us. And the purpose is to separate us from God. He wants that wheat. He wants that kernel. The part after it's been shaken, he wants it. But, but we can let him have us. No. Why? Because Jesus has done what? He prayed for us. Come on. Now watch this. That our what? Faith fail not. <laughs> oh my goodness, brother. Hey, brother Hager, I need somebody to pray for me. I need somebody to pray for me that my faith fails not. Uh, brother Hoover, I, I need somebody to pray for me. But that my faith fail not. I, I, I need for that to happen. But, but, but Ron, I need for somebody to pray for me that my faith fails not. For the practice, I need for somebody to pray for me that my faith yeah. don't fail. Amen. Because Satan knows my name is demanding me because of my shortcoming, my sin, my failure, my transgression, my iniquity. He wants me. And he wants you too. And that's why we need to pray for one another. Jesus said, I pray for you that your faith fail it not. My trust will never waver. My confidence won't slack. My, my, my trust in him will never be minimized. I am faithful because Jesus has paid, prayed for me. Because you have prayed for me. I have prayed for you. That's why that's so important. That we, look, 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 look. I said that word means a, it's a plurality. Uh, you is a plurality. That's why it's so important. That we pick up the phone sometime. And just call somebody and say, I'm just praying for you. I don't know what's going on. But I need to know this much. My brother, my sister, I know Satan knows your name. Because I see the work that you're doing. I see the effort that you're putting in. I see what you're doing. 
I know Satan knows that too. And you are a threat, a potential threat to the kingdom of Satan. All right now. And because of that, my brother, my sister, he's going to be sifting you. But I'm praying for you that you do not lose your faith. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Don't lose your faith. Now watch this. Then he says this. See, here's the key. Here's the key. See, Judas didn't make it. But Peter did. It says, but when you are converted. Oh my goodness. But when you are converted. You know, I always say there are the, the three C's to faithfulness. First is conviction. That's the first C. They're being convicted. The word has convicted you. Uh, the message has convicted you by the word or through the word of God. Uh, whether it be some vessel of a teacher or a preacher or a Sunday school teacher or, or an elder or a deacon or, or some matriarch of the church or some patriarch of the church, uh, the, uh, the word has been heard and you have now been convicted by the word of God. But I'm here to tell you that conviction is not enough. Conviction is not enough. The next thing is to be converted. Yeah. One has to change. Yeah. That's what it means. All right, now. A conversion is something that is done differently. Yes. I've converted my life to Christianity. Right. I no longer follow uh, the world's theories of what life is truly about. And if you follow the theories of what life is in this world, you will die without Christ. All right, now. Yeah, that, that's the world. Yeah. Uh, they, they, you will die uh, without Christ. So it's okay to be convicted, but it's better to be converted because when you convert, you change and things are different in your life. You are now being driven by a different beat of the drum. Unrighteousness is not what you seek any longer. I don't know what the preacher's not saying is that you will fall from time to time. Uh, you don't fall. We all fall. And then it moves you on to the next seat, which is commitment. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so amen. It's commitment. That's what happened. When you are convicted, when you are converted, it drives you directly into being committed. All right now. What are you being committed to? Yeah. You're being committed to the word of God. You're being committed to the will and the way and the works of the almighty God. Yeah. That's what you do. Your yay becomes yay and your nay becomes nay. Your efforts become. You begin to sacrifice. You begin to have more faith. You begin to pray more often because now you're not just convicted. Now you're not just converted, but you are committed to making your lives better and establishing a relationship, a faithful relationship with God. That's what he's saying. So, so, but I have prayed for you that your faith shall it not. Anybody need some prayer today? Yeah. Yeah. Anybody need some prayer today? Yes. Yeah. Anybody need somebody to pray for them? Yeah. Yeah. Anybody need a righteous man's prayer to avail it much? Yeah. Uh, which, which means to have some purpose behind it? Yeah. Is there anybody that needs that? I know I do. Yeah. I know I do because I know Satan knows my name. Yeah. And if he knows your name, he is a sifter. And he's coming after you. All right. He's coming after you. And it's personal. He's going to attack you personally. Yes. There are going to be nights where your mind don't seem to work right. Yes. Uh, you're going to be perplexed. You might seem as though you're in a place of despair, a place of depression. You really don't know what to do. You have become complex uh, to people. Uh, did you hear what I said? You become complex to people. You're not the same person you used to be. Right. You don't act the same way. You don't talk the same way. I'm talking about when Satan, the sickness, knows your name. He's coming after you and it's personal. Right. And then he says, 
And after you've been converted, he says, strengthen. Strengthen your brother. Oh, you see how important you are, Brother Hester? You see how important we are to each other? You see how important you are to, yeah. to me, Brother Antoine, and how important uh, I am to you and you are to me? You see how important we are to each other? He said, go and strengthen your brother. Because I know that God, Jesus knew that Peter was not the only one that Satan has acquired. Who is acquiring for? Who he is requesting? Who he is desiring? Who he is demanding? He wants all of us. I got to help somebody else. Just like you got to help me. This life is rough enough and tough enough with the world fighting against us than for us to be fighting amongst ourselves. We are the church. We are the ecclesia. We are the called out. We are the ones that should exemplify the greatest amount of love yeah. ever seen. Come on, yeah. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. It does not matter about my ethnicity. It does not matter about my skin pigmentation. It does not matter about my education. It does not matter about how much money I have, how much fame I have, how much success I have, how much experience I have. What matters is the relationship that I have with Christ. And therefore, if I'm loving him, I've got to love you all. And you've got to love me. See, our faith can fail. Our faith shouldn't fail. Our confidence, our trust should always be in God. Amen. 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 Yes, sir. She Satan knows my name. He's constantly sifting me. The purpose of it is for me to lose heart, for me to lose faith, and separate myself from God. And I refuse to do it, no matter how tough the battle is. I refuse to do it. Brother Brown, I'm going to keep on getting up. I'm going to keep on getting up. But in order for me to keep getting up, you got to pray for me. Brother Brown, you got to pray for me, and I got to pray for you. Uh, Brother Boone's got to pray for me, and I got to pray for Brother Boone. Brother Hayden's got to pray for me. I got to pray for Brother Ragland. Brother Ragland's got to pray for me. We've got to pray for each other. And guess what? If the world is ever going to see how much uh, 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 that Christ is alive and well, is when we see, when the world sees us loving each other just as we are. No fighting. No power struggle. No pride being up. Yeah, men. No pride. I'm running the show. Got my name on it. Yeah, none of that. We work together and we love each other. Man, I hope I've helped somebody today because uh, you, you got to understand sometimes when the adversity is coming our life, the test coming our life, the purpose of all of that is to refine us, to make us better so that when I am better, I can walk over to Brother Hester and say, my brother, I'm here to strengthen you. And when you are better, you can walk over to Brother Wallace and say, Brother Wallace, I'm here to strengthen you. I'm here to let you know it does not matter what you try to do. You, if, you are, if you are a member of the blood ball church that you can read about in the Bible, I'm telling you, Satan is coming to sift you. He knows your name, and you cannot get away from it. I don't care if you move to Texas. I don't care if you move to Alaska. Uh, you can go to Ukraine. Yeah. Ukraine. Yeah. Hey, 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 that just popped in my head because it, it's right. You can go to Ukraine. Yeah, you can go uh, to uh, uh, Australia. And no matter where you go, he go find you. And the reason why is because he lives in the spiritual realm. Yeah. He lives in a realm that's different from our realm. Yeah. He is a spirit, but he's an unrighteous. He's an evil spirit that's after our souls. Yeah, that's right. And I'm here to tell you there's some things that have already been said. There's some stamp of approval that God has put his seal on where you and I are going to experience some adversity. You and I are going to experience 
some test and trial, but God, did to help us be better. And being better means that we don't, we don't lose, we don't lose faith in him. That's what it is, church. So you heard the word of God on the day. Uh, I, I hope, trust, and pray there's been something that I've said with the use of the book, the chapter, and the verse uh, that uh, the uh, Satan, uh, the sifter, uh, when he knows your name, has yeah. simply put, he's coming after it. Right. You got to recognize that. Yeah. Hold on to God's unchanging hand. Right. Hold on to your trust and your confidence in him. Hold on to your faith in him and prevail. Mm -hmm. Judas didn't make it. Peter did. Yes. Because see, Peter, Peter had was given the keys to the, the kingdom of God. <laughs> he was given the proverbial kings and opened up the doors of the church that you can read about in the yes. Bible. Yes. Which all of us need to be a part of. God has blessed us and brought us here on this morning. Maybe there's someone here that needs prayer. Maybe there's someone here that needs that prayer right now because the sifter got their name. Satan got your name. And you need some prayer. And you need to come up here and say, look, I need this prayer. You need to stand out here and we sing, we need to sing the Savior song of invitation. Say, I need that prayer. I need that prayer. I need that prayer that my faith faileth not. Maybe there's somebody here who, who's not a member of the church, who's not a member of the church that you can read about in the Bible. Uh, look, look, Jesus came and he established the church according to Matthew, the 13th chapter, verse number 16 through 18. He died for that church. He's coming back for that church. We all need to be a part of the church. We all need to be a part of the church. It, 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 we got to hear the word according to Romans, the 10th chapter, verse number 17. Faith coming by hearing, hearing by the word of God. We got to believe it. We got to believe it. See, it's not about, it's not about what I think or, or how I feel or what the world says or, or, or what this preacher says or this pastor or what, what, uh, what that man said or, you know, I, I, I try not to mention names anymore. Y'all know the ones we're talking about. It. I can you know the ones that blink their eyes and got curly hair and big teeth. It, you know, those kind of, it's not about all that visage. It's not try, about trying to make uh, the world fit your life. It's about us fitting our lives to the world. That's what it's about. That's what it's about. So you got to hear, you got to believe, you got to repent of your sin. Repentance just means I, I'm changing my mind. I'm moving from that unrighteous stuff I'm doing, and I'm going to work my best to be a righteous individual. And then you confess the sweetest name that ever rolled off mortal tongue. That is that Jesus Christ is the Son of the God. No different than the Ethiopian eunuch did in Acts the 8th chapter, verse number 26 through 40. And then it, it, it went pulled it right on into there, Brother Antoine. Yes, sir. You got to be baptized. The Ethiopian eunuch said, Here's water. What do you hinder me from being baptized? Baptism is essential to your salvation. Yeah. I didn't say baptism was the only thing you need to do to be saved. Baptism is essential to your salvation. You got to hear it, you got to believe, you got to repent, you got to confess, and you must be baptized. How do I know that to be true? Do you know on the day of Peter calls in Acts, the second chapter, Peter said, The men, they said, What shall we do? He said, Repent and be what? Baptized. Every one of you. In Matthew 16, chapter, verse number 16, uh, uh, Jesus said, uh, He must believe and be baptized. He that believeth and is baptized shall be what? Saved. Shall be saved. He that believeth not shall be condemned. That's why we can go to Romans 8, chapter, verse number 1, where it said, There is now no more condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but walk after the Spirit. I'm so glad that I'm in Christ Jesus. Therefore, I have a right to go to him and ask for forgiveness. I have that mercy. I have that grace. I have everything that I need to make heaven my eternal home. And you need to be in there too. And then you got to live faithfully until death, according to Revelation 2nd chapter, verse number 10. You got to live faithfully until death. So what am I saying? One saying, always saying, is never recorded in the word of God. Never. Matter of fact, Peter said in first, uh, first, first Corinthians, the ninth chapter, verse number 27, he said, lest I too be also a castaway. He said, I buffered my body. I bring it into subjection. So I too wouldn't be a castaway. And a castaway means to be cut off. Yeah. Cut off. And so uh, Paul had it set. But in order to bring the body into subjection, he had to bring this thing into subjection first. He had to bring the mind into subjection first. Because we, we all know the mind controls what? The body. That's what he had to do. And then guess what? Then you, 
You make heaven your own eternal home. When you leave this spot. See, we all leave this spot. And we all will depart from this temporal abode, this physical abode, this tent that you see me in. Uh, but the spirit goes back to God. And the soul of the man, oh my goodness, the soul of the man is what lives on forever. There's not a being that's ever been created, that has ever lived or ever died. That will not continue to live. Right oh, but don't know. What they talk about in Revelation, the fact yeah. that there is the second death. Yeah. I, I'm never going to die. Yeah. The second death. No. I, I probably will die. The first death, unless Jesus come back. Right. We all going to die. Right. That first death. Right. But you ought to be fighting to ensure that you don't die. Yes. The second death, which is eternal death, which is separation from the Almighty God forever. Yeah. That's hell in itself. You don't have to tell me about no darkness and, and fire and uh, dreaming and gnashing of teeth and the worm that never died. You don't have to just tell me that. Just let me know God is not there. The light is not there. That's hell in itself. You've heard the word. Somebody needs to come. Somebody needs to put Christ on in baptism before it's everlasting too late. And somebody needs to come up here and say, I need your prayer. Somebody say, I, I need sin. I have sin. I I'm, I'm confessing the false. I, I'm not had that faith that you're talking about. I'm not been trusting in God. I, I'm not. I don't have confidence in what He says. I don't really trust His promises. So I'm just winging it along the way. Yeah, I come to church. I sing a little song. I give a little tip. I drink a chip. I drink the chip and eat the chip. I'm here. I check the box. I'm going through the motion. But now I'm new in a new year. I want to be new in a new decade, and I want all those old things. To stay gone. They've already passed away. Leave them alone. Yeah. While we stand and sing the Savior song of invitation, please come. Come. Time is still a swift transition. Well, now, I'm done. Move to stay.